These candlesticks almost certainly helped kill someone. It's not what you're probably thinking. Yes, the brass candlestick has a storied history as a makeshift bludgeon, but these are actually bronze candlesticks. See, brass is copper and zinc, whereas bronze is copper and tin. Each alloy can have other stuff mixed into it, but generally, the bright yellow one is brass. The reason why these bronze candlesticks have a warm golden color is they're covered in 24 karat gold. They weren't gold-plated, though. They were gilded. And it was during that process that they assaulted their maker. Let's quickly address a few of those words. There, there, and there mean very different things. T-H-E-R-E -E is a location, so if you can drop the T and here makes sense, use that one. T-H-E-I-R is possessive, it means belonging to them. T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E -E is a contraction that means they are. So if you want to show possession, don't use the one with the apostrophe and don't use the location. You can figure the rest out from there. Well, that's quite enough of that. Now, when we use the term gold-plated, we're almost always referring to electroplating. It was first invented at some point in the early 19th century, but it wasn't until decades later that it saw widespread use. As an aside, there's a modern rumor that a chemist named Luigi Brugnatelli had his research on electroplating actively suppressed, but as far as I can tell, the internet just made that up. Seriously, if you Google Brugnatelli, you'll find hundreds of sites paraphrasing the claim that the French Academy of Science has blocked him from ever publishing. But here's a piece of his that was published in 1805, and here's one that he published in 1817. I'm getting a bit sidetracked here, but I wanted to mention this because it sure looks like a bunch of people are copying one another's incorrect homework. Anyway, in the 1840s, a British silversmith named George Elkington commercialized the electroplating process, and it hasn't really changed all that much to this day. Basically, you put something in a toxic bath and zap it for a while. That bath has a bunch of metal in it, and the electricity causes the metal to bind with the object's surface. Gilding is a little bit different, and it's a whole lot older. There are a lot of different ways that it can be done, but the method that produced the best results is actually illegal now. See, craftsmen would dissolve gold and mercury, creating a kind of thick paste that they'd paint onto objects. Those objects would be heated, causing the mercury to boil away and leave the gold behind. Since mercury fumes can easily cause both neurological damage and death, anyone who used the process was trading years of their life in order to make something beautiful. Mercury gilding was eventually banned by most of the world, and electroplating made it obsolete anyway. That's why we can say that they literally don't make them like they used to. If we look back at 18th century France, though, we can still imagine what craftsmen did in the name of workmanship. And as for the candlesticks, they're there poisoning their makers.